because I like to ask them questions. I like to ask Christians questions rather than having them ask me questions. Um, when I asked them about the only about the Trinity, they would give you this verse. I just explained to you that, that it does not exist. Uh, and if they want to challenge you with that, then you tell them that then you need to, the, the now the, the burden of proof is on you to prove me wrong. Um, when it comes to who Jesus said he was, I can assure you without a doubt that Jesus never claims divinity for himself. And we have two things that you can uh, call. There's something called explicit statements. Everyone knows what an explicit statement means. Uh, explicit statements are clear. We, you, there's no room for interpretation to what this means. Like, for instance, when God says, I am one, this is explicit. And there's something called implicit statements when the meanings can be derived differently depending on how you look at them. These are implicit statements. Uh, you know, th these can be taken different ways and can be interpreted in different ways. These are not direct statements. And we know for sure, even in a court of law, an explicit statement always overrides an implicit statement. I don't care if you have 50 implicit statements. If there's one explicit statement to the contrary, it will automatically override the understanding of those implied statements. And you have to understand those implied meanings based on the explicit explanations that we do have. And so when you take Jesus' teachings, he, he did teach things explicitly and implicitly. And the implicit statements were, were twisted against him by the Jews uh, and tried to use against him. But when you weigh those things against the explicit statements, not only do the explicit statements outnumber the implicit statements, but when you weigh the implicit statements against the explicit statements of Jesus Christ, then they will make sense even as what is of left of the New Testament, beyond all of the issues that it may have. And I... I'm not going to be able to get to all the evidences, but I'm going to tell you how you can get every single evidence that I have right outside when you leave, uh, in, uh, insha'Allah. And I'm going to give it to you. Jesus said in a couple of places, I'm just going to give you a few places, implicit, explicitly. John 17 and 3 is, um, John 17, 3, and people may say that you're taking the verse out of context because I'm giving you verse by verse, and that's where you would tell them then the burden of proof is on you to prove that I have taken it out of context. Because uh, I don't try to take things out of context because that's what they do to us. So I try not to do that to them. <clears throat> John 17 and 3 is, is um, an example of an explicit statement. Jesus says, reportedly, we don't know. It says that Jesus says, and this is life eternal. Meaning that this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent with their, 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 these words of emphasis in this verse this is life eternal that they may know you not me he did not say they may know me they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have begotten no whom you have birthed no whom you have sent. So this is what Jesus says about himself reportedly from the New Testament. This is an explicit statement. So anyone who says that Jesus claimed divinity has to now weigh that against this statement. Any implicit statement that you have, which there are no explicit statements that exist that Jesus said he was divine. They do not exist. Guarantee you. There's no explicit statements where Jesus says, I am God. Worship me. Adore me. I am your salvation there are no explicit statements to this fact there are implicit statements but they have to be weighed against the evidence and this evidence is really strong where Jesus says this also Jesus says verily in John 13 verse 16 and this is the reason why I like to use John a lot because the book of John is used a lot to prove the divinity of Jesus it's hard to it's harder to find it in Matthew Mark and Luke uh, in John, there's, there's a lot more of implicit statements that they, they use. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that the servant is not greater than his Lord, nor is he that is sent greater than he who sent him. 
This is what Jesus says about himself. That I say unto you in a parable that the Lord, or, or that the servant is not greater than his master. And that he who is sent, meaning me, is not greater than he who sent me. Here we see clear dis distinctions between who Jesus was and who God was. Also, in John 14, verse 28... Jesus said, or is reported to have said, You have heard how I say unto you that I go away and I come again unto you. You've heard how I've said that I have to go and come away. So we know that Jesus was teaching from his very inception that he's going to leave and he will come again. This is something that the Hawarin understood. He said, If you loved me, then you would rejoice because I say that I go unto the Father for the Father is greater than I. Then if you loved me, you would rejoice that I have to go because the Hawari'een understood, as we know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about what Isa alayhi salam says in Surah Al-Saf, what does he say? وَقَالَ الْإِسَىٰ إِبْنُ مَرْيَمْ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقَ لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ مِنَ التَّرَادِ وَمُبُوشِرًا بِرَسُولِ يَتِيمٍ بَعْدِ اسْمَهُ أَحْمَدِ that they knew. He said, if you, if you love me, you rejoice that I have to go. Because that leaving, me leaving means that Muhammad can come. And, and he says, and I have to ascend unto the Father. Which the Father in, 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 in rabbinical Judaic terminology, it was a, a honored way of referring to God. It did not refer to Father in the sense of, of connections. Uh, even normal people refer to God as the Father. He said, I have to ascend unto the Father because the Father is greater than I. This is what Jesus says. Now these, this is what you call explicit. This is what you call explicit. I mean, I don't know how much more explicit someone can be than to say that this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent, and that the servant is not greater than his master, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. I have to the Father is greater than I. This, no, I, mean, I don't know how you can get anything else out of this. Also, Jesus says, when he was asked about the greatest commandment, they came to him and said, what is the greatest commandment of Moses? This is in Mark 12, 29-31. They were asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said, first of all, the first commandment is the hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Fundamental principle. He said, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And you should love him with all of your heart, with all of your might, and all of your strength. And then you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. And the rest of the laws hang on these two hooks. So he said, first of all, he, he created a, a, a sliding scale that the pyramid at the top is that the Lord your God is one. And the two fundamental principles beyond that are that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. And you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then everything hangs on these two. This is a profound statement about the Aqeedah of Isa alayhi salam. And if you look at it, it's the exact Aqeedah of a Muslim. Because at the top of the pyramid with our Aqeedah, we have what? Tawheed. Tawheed is the top. Off of these two things, when you generalize the principles of Islam, they, they are grouped into two things. Number one, the rights of the Creator. When it comes to Ibadah, when it comes to God, Rights of the Creator that we owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the other side are the rights of creation. How we deal with each other and how we deal with human beings, society and sociolog uh, uh, sociologically. And everything else is descending from these two basic principles. Right or wrong? And this is what Jesus describes was his aqidah. It's very clear. And this is for sure without a doubt the aqidah of a Muslim. This is the root of everything in Islam. Are these two principles, what we owe to God and what we owe to the creation and, and at the top of that is Tawheed because we know for sure that without Tawheed the world as we know, the world does not even exist without the issue of Tawheed coming in. Now had he been divine, this, as I said, this would have been a perfect opportunity for Jesus to do so and this is the last one I'm going to give to you and this is going to be kind of a teaser to make sure you come to the next one. Um, if Jesus was divine then he needed no one. If he was God, 
God is not in need of anything. And this is one thing that I discuss in one of my videos called the top 10 reasons Jesus cannot be God.